Again, good morning. And I want to welcome everybody and thank you for being here today. Um, I know that outside it's a little chilly and uh, the clouds uh, are covering up the sun, but I can tell you inside here it's warm and the sun is shining uh, and it's, it's going to be an awesome day. You know, one of, one of the sayings I use all the time and, and say to people is, make it a great day, right? Because we have the ability to make our day the best day possible, right? We don't have to worry about what happens around us. We have the ability to do that. Well, today, we're going to help you make it a great day. Because if you've never been part of a car award, if you've never been to Vehicles for Change and see what we do every day, at the end of today, if you don't have goosebumps, if your heart's not beating hard, we're going to check your vital signs because something's wrong. So before I would get started, I do want to welcome some folks. I, I really appreciate everybody being here, but there's some individuals that I need to recognize. First, there are three organizations, uh, foundations in Baltimore that do so much for the city and for the residents of Baltimore and support vehicles for change for years. Uh, the Abel Foundation, the Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation, and the Franz Merrick Foundation. And I know their representatives are here today. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, also, Jason Perkins Cohen, who heads the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, has joined us today and is doing great things with folks in the city. Uh, Kevin Kraft, representing Governor Hogan, uh, is here today. We have a number of the Vehicles for Change board members. If you're a board member, I appreciate Raise your hand. We have a great board that, that does so much to, to help us move this program forward. Uh, and I know there's a representative from the Greater Baltimore Committee here today. Thank you very much. Uh, and two state organizations that are very involved with Vehicles for Change uh, and representing uh, Secretary Scholes from the Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation, Mary Keller, and from the Department of Human Services, Sean Washington. We have a program called the Transportation Assistance Program that provides transportation for individuals all over the state. And I also want to recognize Amy Elias and her team at Profiles, who really orchestrated this whole event and, and worked really hard over the last uh, several weeks, which we didn't have a lot of time to put this together. So Amy, I, I know you're out there somewhere. You and your team, raise your hand. Really, you guys did a great job. Thank you very much for everything you did. Just a little quick uh, opening about Vehicles for Change and what we do for those who aren't aware. We've been around since 1999. We've provided almost 6,000 cars to low-income families in Maryland, Virginia, and Michigan. And recently, we opened up an automotive training program where we're training individuals who come out of incarceration to be auto mechanics. And those individuals did a lot of the work on these 20 cars that you see here today. And as they graduate, those guys, 100% of our graduates are getting full-time jobs at service centers throughout the region, but I can tell you more importantly, five of those are full-time employed right now at the Heritage Auto Group. So Heritage is doing more than just providing cars, they're providing jobs for people in need. And I think Chris Nelson, Chris, raise your hand. Chris Nelson was just hired by the Heritage Group uh, and we'll start there next week. So we're excited to have number six go to work at the dealership. But today is really about car awards and the, the 20 outstanding families that are going to get their vehicles today. But even more than that, highlighting a partnership between a public corporation and a nonprofit organization that have come together to really have a greater impact on the families in the region. And we're so excited to be part of that. Many of you guys are familiar with our superhero program. You've seen our commercials. The little boy with a broken arm comes out and talks about how the donor of our cars is actually our superhero, not just to us, but to our families who get the cars. Well, today, we have a new superhero, right? And if there's such a thing as a super duper hero, the Heritage Auto Group, who is now donating cars, and through Mr. Fader, is, is really the true superhero and, and our superhero of the year. Now, over the past couple of years, I've gotten an opportunity to get to know 
Mr. Steve Fader and a number of his management team. And if I could, I want to tell you a little bit about what I learned from these guys. More than a year ago, Steve contacted me personally to talk about how we could build a partnership between the Heritage Automotive Group and Vehicles for Change. And after that, for the next several months, I met with not only his senior management team, but with Mr. Fader himself in numerous meetings looking at how we can make this partnership the most impactful it can possibly be. Now, I want you to let that sink in and think about that for a minute. The Heritage Group and the Mall One family is one of the largest automotive dealer conglomerates in the country. This is a major corporation, and their president and their senior management team is meeting to see how we can make a community program most effective. That in itself is building a culture of giving back and community impact from the very top down. That is something you don't find very often in corporations. And Madam Mayor, I would wager to say that if we could get all the corporations in the region to drink from the Mall One Heritage Well, I think we could solve all our problems in Baltimore yeah, City. That. With that, I would like to do, introduce the man who made this all happen, a friend of mine and the president of the Heritage Group, Mr. Steve Fader. First, let me, let me say that uh, this is Marty Schwartz, who didn't introduce himself. <laughs> he is the heart and soul of Vehicles for Change. And none of this, of course, would happen, not without heritage, but all the work that Vehicles for Change has done in this community over the years has been nothing short of stellar. Uh, our mantra here of transportation is transformational has been something that Marty and his team has brought to life. But before we get started, I want to recognize a couple people that are here today. Uh, Delegate uh, Ali Bilal, who is from the 41st District. Is he here? No? He was supposed to be here. OK. How about Reverend Jerome Stevens from Senator Cardin's office? Maybe it was a little overcast for them. But Rabbi Mitchell Wahlberg is here celebrating his 73rd birthday. So we want to recognize him. So today, today is, in fact, about transformation. Transformation that drives opportunity for each of the families who have joined us today. When they leave here, many now owning a vehicle for the very first time, their lives will be transformed because they will now have access to transportation on their terms. They'll be able to go to the grocery store of their choice that offer fresh foods at fair pricing. They'll be able to take their kids to school and to after-school programs. They'll be able to get to their jobs on time without relying on public transportation. They'll have access to medical and health care and to libraries and places of worship when they want and where they want. So now with the commitment of Heritage, a mile one auto group company, our 1,200 employees, our 15 brands, and our 19 dealerships in the Baltimore area, and along with the great work of Vehicles for Change, we begin our journey in transforming the lives of the families throughout Baltimore. Today we start with 20 cars. You can see them all around us. All shapes, sizes, colors, and models. But they all have one thing in common. They represent freedom and independence, and more importantly, opportunity. Opportunity that only comes from owning a vehicle. I want to take a moment and introduce a hardworking single mom, Sedana Broadnax, who received the vehicle from Vehicles for Change just a year ago. Her story is not unlike the 20 families here with us today. So take a look. My typical morning was getting up at like 5.45. I would have to leave by 6.15, 6.20 to walk and take my son about three to four blocks down to the babysitter and then walk 
about four to six blocks down to the bus stop. Sometimes I would get almost to the corner and the bus passes me by. So I would have to call my job to let them know that I was running a little late, you know, I'm getting the bus and everything. And I would really get mad because I'm like, I should have a car. This is crazy. But, you know, just had to wait and be patient. I'm always a positive person, so I'm always thinking of how can I make this better? So my kids look up to me and I'm their role model. So it's like, whatever I do, I'm like, look, this is just temporarily. We're going to get back on track. You know, you'll come across that in life because everything's not set in stone. Now that I have a car, it's much, much easier for me to get around. It's not a long commute. I don't have to get up at 5.45 in the morning. I'm in total control of my time. My son started school this year. He's in pre-K. So with me having a vehicle, um, I'm able to take him to school and that's our one-on-one -on -one time. We have our little talk in the morning. And uh, um, he tells me what he's going to do. Like today, he's going to the pumpkin patch and he's really excited about that. He wanted to get to school extra early. Every morning when I go out and I start my car, um, I feel great joy because it's mine and I can go anywhere I want to. So I just thank Vehicle for Change for giving me that opportunity to have a vehicle again. That's really in short what this is all about. And thank you, Sedona, for sharing that story. So today, Heritage is pleased to be able to give these 20 families vehicles that will most certainly realize many of their dreams, dreams that often are taken for granted by most of us. And it won't stop here today. We are committed to Vehicles for Change, and in the spring, we'll do this again for another group of Baltimore families. But we need you to join us. The need is great, and the resources, like always, are limited. So I invite everybody here, those that can, help us change these families through these transportation programs. Go to vehiclesforchange.org. You can see how easy it is, how effortless it is to, to, donate, and, uh, to donate your vehicle and, the fact, transform those lives. I wish for you the happiness that you get for doing that is the happiness that I have here today as I stand up and being so proud of this company for being able to do this and impact our community. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our mayor, Catherine Pugh, a great champion, a great champion for Vehicles for Change, and more importantly, someone who understands and appreciates the impact that Vehicles for Change is making in transforming the, transforming the lives of Baltimore residents. Mayor Pugh. First, let me just say uh, to Vehicles for Change, to Steve, Heritage Mile One, you know, this is really part of Steve's family foundation. And can you imagine if everyone thought the same way that Steve thinks? What a great world this would be. What I want you to know, Steve, and what I want you to know, uh, Vehicles for Change, Mr. Schwartz, is that this is the way to change the narrative about our city. There are so many people out there. When I think about the number of people who want to work, who can't get to work, and i never forget a story by a business person who took one of the 9,000 young people that we put to work this summer, and he called me after the young man had been working there for about four weeks, and he said, Mayor Pugh, I just want to share a story with you. He said, this young man had to catch the bus every single day. And he would get up real early in the morning to catch the bus to get to work. And one morning, it was pouring down rain. And the bus just went right by him. And so rather than go back home, he ran two miles to work. And he said to me, 
I'm going to keep him because he's a real keeper. And I share that story with you similar to the story that you saw on the video. There are many people out there, regardless of their situation, who would really like to work. A vehicle, as Mr. Fader said, is freedom. Freedom of choice. Where to work, where to live, where to shop. And so I cannot be more grateful for this effort, and we look forward to the continuing partnership. Because what Vehicle for Change has done is not only train people into a field that creates really great opportunity, it is transforming lives for individuals throughout our city and throughout our region. So for that, I say thank you. But let me just say, I think you're not here to hear speeches. We're here to give away cars. So Steve, if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I know you all are ready. So I sort of now we're going to introduce some people here. So yeah, let's get, let's get to it. First, let me uh, recognize we have a lot of people, a lot of folks here from uh, Heritage, and I want them to kind of take their place by their, by their cars, but I want, to rec I want to recognize them. We have a list. Here, here's the list. <laughs> first, our Chief Operating Officer, Scott Fader. Scott's here. He's going to give away the first, first car. Constantine, Constantine Spivak, Hal Perez, Michael Barnes, Dan Matasek, Sarah Udahofen, Mike Zalowski, Mike Schilt, Bill Starr, Robert Lee, Brad Scammell, Phil Stillman, Deb Feinberg, Katrina Pemberton, Jenna Cheney, Hoosh, I'm not even going to pronounce the last name Hoosh, <laughs> all right, Tara Hobson, Danielle Sarka, Laura Dougherty, and Jenny Ruth. So you know, so many of these people have been involved in this, in this project and have really taken this, uh, really taken this on, or I'm not, couldn't be more proud of you. And just before you do this, yep. the sun came out. Yeah. It's a great day. It's a great day. Yeah. It's a great day. It's a, it is a great day. So S Scott's going to hand out the first set of keys to Candace Taylor. Now listen to this. Once a three-hour commute to work will now take her a fraction of that time and she will finally be able to watch her son compete in his wrestling tournaments. Who's got her keys? All right, get your keys, Melanie. I'm gonna look out for with the car that I got now. It's gonna help other people, other families. A little ride to the market. Go ahead, fill the trunk up. Get everything you want. You know what I mean? You don't gotta carry those cases of water. <laughs> Put them in the trunk, you know? And that's great, man. <laughs> 